I am sitting in a car with what I think has one of the greatest rides in history. But the interesting thing about this car is that it's not an expensive car. It was never designed to appeal to those with a fine taste in luxury. It's just an affordable people's car with one of the greatest suspensions ever made. So what is this magical car that was affordable and has a better ride than anything I've ever driven? It is of course the Citroën de Chevaux, the 2CV. This car was designed to take French farmers across an unplowed field without breaking any eggs in their basket that they were taking to the market. Now the magic in the suspension in the small Citroën de Chevaux is pretty incredible and it really is forward thinking for when this car was revealed in 1948 and it is still forward thinking today. So here we have a very primitive model of a Citroën 2CV but it will demonstrate some of the cool engineering behind this vehicle. So if we flip it upside down we can see that the 2CV is made out of a chassis and a body so it is a body on frame vehicle with independent suspension on all four corners but the way it works is pretty out of this world. So you'll see we've got leading arms mounted on the front that are hinged on these bearings on both sides of the chassis. And in the back, we have trailing arms. And in the middle, they are connected by these tubes and a series of push rods. The springs in the 2CV actually lie underneath, mounted horizontally in this canister, in this metal tube. And here's how it works. This is a really kind of crude diagram of what's going on inside of each of the spring tubes. And reminder, there's one of these mounted on each side of the car. Now these spring tubes actually have two springs inside of them, one for the front wheels and one for the rear wheels. And you can see that these push rods connect these bell cranks attached to the wheels. And as the suspension moves up and down, these springs compress. Very clever. Now this would be smart, giving you four wheel independent suspension on all four corners, but it goes even further than that because the entire tube assembly itself is actually suspended on its own set of rubber bushings. Now these little rubber bushings were actually steel on the early cars and then rubber mounted on the later cars, but this right here is really the ingenious part of the 2CV suspension setup because the fact that the entire spring tube can move back and forth means that the front and the rear suspension is interconnected. Let's see how it does at 20 miles an hour over this speed bump. We'll get the slow-mo. There's 10, 15, and 20 miles an hour there. Unbelievable. It just floats. You don't get any of this forward to back pitch that we've been seeing with other cars driving through the same area. So let's check out on paper what makes this system so ingenious and why the connected front and the rear suspension works so well on the 2CV. So let's say you hit a bump with the front tire of the Citroën. Maybe it's a speed bump, maybe it's a rock, maybe it's a hole in your plowed field. This is gonna have the effect of pushing this wheel upward. Now that's gonna in turn have an effect on this tie rod, pulling this spring toward the front of the vehicle, compressing that spring. Now, because the spring is compressing, it's also going to have an impact on the spring tube itself. And that's where this little guy is pretty genius, this little rubber bunion. That entire spring tube is also going to move ever so slightly toward the front of the vehicle, thus having an impact on the rear suspension, on this rear tie rod. Now, the effect is that the rear tire is going to be forced downward thus leveling the vehicle as you hit a bump. So this significantly reduces the amount of pitch forward to back as you hit a speed bump or a hole or pretty much anything. The vehicle is gonna move up and down versus forward and back. You're not gonna get that head toss. So I'm gonna take a speed bump now at 30 miles an hour and let's see how it does. On the throttle, all right, there's 20. There's 30, not slowing down. <laughs> I mean, we did get some up and down hop, but there was no forward to back. This thing is just incredible in the way it takes bumps.
One other side note about the 2CV suspension, so this is a 1982 and this car actually has shock absorbers, but the early car used friction dampers, kind of like a clutch system. Uh, it worked really well, but the shock absorbers came later on, and you can see they're also mounted, of course, on their side. Now, of course, in the 2CV, you do have an enormous amount of roll left and right and left and right, but that interconnected aspect of the front and the rear suspension are actually less important when you go to roll the vehicle over in a turn because what you're doing essentially is just pulling both tie rods the equal amount as the entire car leans over. So that kind of front to back motion doesn't really have a very, very big of an impact on the left to right. The other cool thing too is that it said you cannot roll a 2CV. These have really thin tires and they're actually designed to understeer and have huge amounts of grip right at the limit. But because the engine is a horizontal two cylinder mounted low, because the whole car weighs just only 1300 pounds and it is body on frame, the center of gravity is actually super low. And it said, as long as you're going forward, you can't roll a two CV. Now I've heard that you can roll one doing like a J turn backward, full lock at high speeds, but at least going forward, in theory, it's impossible to roll these cars. A nice round circle here. <laughs> And lean! And lean! <laughs> but you know what? It actually sticks super well, even though it feels like it's about to roll right on over. Even at that massive lean angle, it'll just hold it there. That is pretty amazing. All right, now driving the 2CV, it is kind of like driving a waterbed in that, yes, it is incredibly roly-poly, but it's also remarkably controlled. So like a lot of cars from the 1970s built here in the US, you hit a bump and it's just endless forward and backward, and then you got the side to side, and you end up doing this, like you're cruising through a storm in a little dinghy. But the 2CV is very roly-poly, but it's also very settled and controlled. It will return to its natural equilibrium really quickly. And when you hit speed bumps like this, there's just, there's almost no reason to slow down. Now, of course, this car is 40 years old, so it's a little bit rattly, but as long as you just kind of trust it, it, it will hold in there. And yes, it is kind of alarming when you go to make an emergency maneuver and the whole thing goes, Arr! but as long as you believe that the French could have won the war if they wanted to, you're gonna be just fine. Okay, fast turn, fast turn, vehicle rolls over, and it is just fine. You can take dirt roads in this car like none other too because bumps just like kind of disappear. We've got a set of railroad tracks. I'm going to accelerate up to about 35 here. Hit the big bump. Nothing. I mean, the incredible part about the 2CV is yes, it has a great ride. And there's a lot of cars that have a great ride, like the Citroën DS or the SM, right? They had this crazy hydro pneumatic suspension that was self leveling and used this um, liquid hydraulic mineral stuff, which, you know, it was a fluid, hydraulic fluid and all the absorbers, whatever. But the 2CV was built for farmers and poor farmers in France. This was a car, this was a car that was not meant to be expensive and luxurious. It was a car meant to carry people to market. And the GoPro just fell off onto the hood, but I think I can catch it. <laughs> Alright, pause, 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 let me grab it. Anyways, that's not helping my case about having a good ride, but you get the point. This was a car built to be affordable using as little steel as possible to mobilize rural France, and it has this ride. And yet you're getting a lot of affordable economy cars today and they ride like cabbage carts and wheelbarrows. Just goes to show that clever engineering can be brought to the masses, but the companies have to want to do it. Well, as always, this has been Tommy behind the camera case for the Fastlane Classics. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in soft and firm luxury and affordable car reviews.